State legislators passed a bill to raise New Mexico's minimum wage to 8 dollars in 2013, a bill Governor Susana Martinez vetoed. And despite calls by President Obama to raise the federal minimum wage to $10.10 .10 an hour, Congress has failed to act. For local group CAFE, Communities in Action and Faith, that was a call to action. Executive Director Sarah Nolan says they wanted to lead the charge to raise the minimum wage to provide relief to struggling residents in Las Cruces. Our job is to get them out of poverty. The ballot initiative is a democratic process enshrined in the Las Cruces City Charter to allow groups like CAFE or any registered city voter to play a role in public policy and ultimately have an ordinance considered by City Council. Putting together a ballot initiative is a long, tedious process. For CAFE, it took more than a year to draft the ordinance, get the language approved by the city and collect enough petition signatures. But once in front of the council, it becomes a simple yes or no vote, a yes enacting it and a no to put it on the ballot. But neither of those things happened. While the council voted four to three to enact the ordinance, stopping it from going onto the ballot, the mayor and the councillors that voted for it said they were in fact against it. They went on to detail their plans and power to change the terms of the very ordinance their vote just brought into law. Councillor Miguel Silva says the 1010 law conflicts with an 850 minimum wage ordinance enacted earlier in the year. The public, at least the persons that signed the petition, say we would like to see 1010 in the future. Now it may not be as soon as CAFE wants within two or three years by 2017, it might be in five years. But I think this is something that the council needs to take serious and to discuss and to resolve. While the council majority may have found a way to have its cake and eat it too, the surprise move left a bitter taste in the mouths of many Las Cruces. Former state senator Steve Fishman said in a Las Cruces Sun news column that the mayor, Silva, Greg Smith and Sil Levantino were throwing democracy under the bus and betrayed voters' trust by pulling a questionable stunt to win the issue. But Silva told KRWG News that the council would have had to reconcile the two minimum wage laws regardless of a November vote by the public. He contends the council vote in favour of the 1010 minimum wage laws allows the city to save time and money. City councillor Nathan Small disagrees. He says the vote in favour of the 1010 minimum wage should supersede the 850 law. There does not seem to need to be reconciliation between different ordinances that what is passed is the law of the land, what is passed most recently. CAFE director Sarah Nolan says what is best for the community ought to be determined by the community. She says the argument that the council must reconcile the two minimum wage laws is all about power. They wanted to keep power in the city hall chambers and keep it out of the ballot and keep it out of the hands of voters, especially working class and, and low income voters, because they want to keep the power. This is, a, this is about power. Nolan says CAFE is consulting with an attorney to evaluate the validity of the councillor's arguments. In his column, former state senator Fishman says the vote may have broken the law and there is no legal precedent to suggest that the now past 1010 ordinance shouldn't trump any prior minimum wage laws. For KRWG, I'm Simon Thompson.